Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy, and my guest today is one of the most popular tennis players in the world. She's reached the semis in two Grand Slams, the finals in another, has millions of followers on social media, and once played basketball with Drake as her coach. Jeannie Bouchard is here. Jeannie, I'm so glad that you're here and that you came in today. It's, Thank I'm you. I'm excited about this. Thank you for having me. Of course. So let's go right to that all-star game. It was in Toronto, and you played in the, on the celebrity team. Drake was your coach. Um, what does Drake say in the huddle? What is that like? <laughs> he was super positive. He was like, everyone, let's go and have fun. And I was kind of like, give us more tactics. You know, we really want to win because it was like Team Canada versus Team USA. Um, and he was like, yeah, go have fun. And, and I went to go play um, a shift and I came back and he was like, Jeannie, I'm benching you. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I was really not good. And it was mostly men playing as well. And, you know, the egos were coming out of and course. men were trying to show off and no one was passing me the ball. And um, Drake just thought I wasn't that um, beneficial for the team. <laughs> Whoa. Were you a fan of Drake before this? Yes, of course. And I still love him. You know, he's, he smells amazing. So he made he up for it. He smells amazing? Yeah. Wait, what? I didn't know this about Drake. What do you mean he smells amazing? He just, I don't know what cologne he uses, but when you go in for a hug, you're just like in heaven. Interesting. Yes. I want to find out what he's wearing these days. <laughs> okay, so you just got back from a tennis tournament at Richard Branson's Island. Tennis tournament. It was it's like an exhibition. A lot of a lot of fun going on. Okay, tennis tournament. tournament let's call it that. At Richard Branson's <laughs> Island. Um, who was there? There were lots of pros that were okay. there. Um, a lot of us there to. We were going to play for charity, so yeah, it was uh, it was a great cause. Um, but again, a lot of fun to explore this like private island that no one can get to, basically. Yeah, what's the craziest thing about the island? The most amazing part. Well, Richard, first of all, is amazing. He's so positive and he loves life so much, and he loves tennis. So mm -hmm. I played with him, and I was trying to coach him a little bit. Um, but the best part of the island is just. Anything you want, you can have. We were like, hey, can we, you know, go out on a boat? They're like, yep, boat will be ready in half an hour and just go do, you know, water activities and let's uh, let's do a sailboat race around the island. Uh, let's like swim to this island to have lunch over there for the day. And it was just like another world. So you started playing tennis when you were five years old. Yes. At what age did you realize that you were not just good, but like this could be really something? Well, I, I loved it as soon as I started playing. Um, I just love hitting the ball and I love competing as well. So I think it's really early to say this age, but I basically knew I wanted to be a professional tennis player when I was nine years old. And I don't recommend, you know, people uh, deciding their careers maybe at nine, because that's maybe not for everyone. But for me, I was like full steam ahead. I knew it. Do you feel like you missed out on childhood at all? I definitely do. Uh, I had to miss school a lot to go to training when I was younger. I missed a lot of birthday parties, sleepovers, family events. And, uh, you know, it's tough for a kid to, you know, go to sleep when everyone else was going to a birthday party because I had a match at 8 a.m. the next morning, you know. Um, but obviously, looking back, all the sacrifices were worth it. Yeah. So your professional breakthrough, that happened in 2013. You're playing your first Grand Slam at the French Open. Mm -hmm. When you're walking out there, what's going through your mind? I was I was just so excited to play my first Grand Slam. Um, in the first round, I, I won my my first match. So, um, you know, it's always been a lifelong dream of mine to play in the Grand Slams. And um, you know, after that, I had a great success in Grand Slams as well. The year later, getting to the finals of Wimbledon. So, for me, it was just I felt like I was just living my dreams. I get this this image of you like you knew very very early in your life what you wanted to do you're very career oriented goal oriented and like maybe that didn't even surprise you so much being there it just felt like that was what you were supposed to do right that's interesting that you say that because when I did reach the finals of Wimbledon I got to five in the world everyone was like oh my god are you surprised by what happened and I was so focused and in my bubble, I was actually like, no, like I've worked my whole life for this. This is exactly what I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously looking back, I realized what I accomplished was, was great. Um, but in that moment, I was like, this is normal, you know? Yeah. <laughs> this is what I've worked for. This is like kind of what I expected to happen. But yeah. of course, it's, it's amazing that it did. No, it is, but I understand that. If, if this is the vision that you've had for yourself the whole time, it makes sense that you would be there. Exactly, and, and working from such a young age to achieve yeah. that, I would hope that I would get close to those goals that yeah. I had. I get it. I get it. I know exactly what that means. <laughs> um, so the next year you make it to the semis of the French and the Australian Open and then the finals at Wimbledon. Mm -hmm. um, that was your first and still your only Grand Slam final. 
when you're thinking back on that match, what are you, what are your thoughts? Uh, even though I lost that day, obviously those memories are so special. Um, I mean, I was playing in the finals of Wimbledon, you know, the biggest tournament of the year. Uh, Princess Eugenie was watching me from the Royal Box. She's actually who I was named after, so to have her come out and watch. Um, she came to support me because she knew like, I was named after her, and it was just such a surreal day. It was, it was amazing. There was a situation where a reporter after a match asked you to give them a twirl. Yes. What were your thoughts? <laughs> In the moment, uh, it was right after I won the match, and you know there's a whole crowd, and I was being interviewed. So in the moment, I was like, I felt awkward, but I was like, sure, and I did a little spin, and then I get off the court and I check my phone, and people are going crazy because people are basically saying, well, they would never ask a male athlete to do that, and so it took on this life of its own. And even today, when there's topics about you know the difference of male and female in sports, it's always referenced um, as such a kind of sexist question. And so I was like, well, if you ask me to twirl, then you got to ask the guys to like you know flex their guns or you know show <laughs> off, show something off as well because you know it, a guy would not be asked that. So it's were you offended by it? Like I said, in the moment, it's hard to kind of realize what's happening. But looking back, I mean. I thought I was wearing a cute outfit, okay, so I was happy to show mm -hmm. it off. <laughs> but the the difference of questions geared towards yeah. male and female athletes, there's definitely this difference. So your Instagram, you have a really big following. Do you feel pressure that you need to be kind of constantly available to them or constantly interesting to your followers? <laughs> I definitely understand that question. I definitely don't feel interesting all the time. Um, and I think it's it's part of our lifestyle, you know, and for you as well, for all of us in, in the public eye, um, I think fans just want content all the time. And sometimes you just have a normal day and I'm like, I got nothing to give you guys right now. Yeah. <laughs> there, are, there are some people um, who will say like, oh, maybe focus more on tennis instead of the branding and all of this kind of stuff. Do you feel like that's, they're misunderstanding what you're trying to do? I mean, that is literally the story of my life. Um, yeah. And that's, I feel this pressure. I'll post something non-tennis related and then boom, all the comments are like, get on the court, go practice. Why aren't you playing tennis? As if I'm supposed to be playing tennis like 24 seven, you know what I mean? And for me, I do so many different and cool things in my life. I, I travel around the world and I love to show like, the, my life aspect of it, my personal you know, experiences with what I do. Um, to me, being on the court is my job. It's, I love it, but I do it every single day. So to me, it's not like an exciting thing to post. But um, so I have to like, I feel guilty and I feel like I have to post a picture of me playing tennis every like other week to be like, hey guys, reminder, I still play tennis, even though you know, I was just on Necker Island and posting like bikini selfies. So it's this constant balance and I just realized you can't please everyone. Mm -hmm. So might as well just be yourself and own it.